Welcome to the Get Busy Pod, number one podcast for hustlers. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode on the Get Busy Pod, the number one podcast for hustlers. You know what it is, man. I got my co-host with me. Yo, what it do, what it do. My name's A-God. You already know what it is. And today we wanted to bring on a special guest, man. Um, you know, we want to talk about promotion. Promoting is a skill. And what better person to have on here than, I would say, the number one promoter in Boston, in Massachusetts. Someone that, you know, moved over to this country. Been working hard ever since. All his events are packed out. I've gone to a few myself. Um, so why not, you know, bring someone that's very good at, like I said, at promoting. So for today... Um, our special guest, we got Vaz here, man. What's up, man? It's Vaz. Uh, appreciate you for having me. I'm Vaz. I'm a club promoter. I'm an artist. I do a little bit of A&R. Uh, and I also have my clothing brand, Vaz Baby Collection. I'm wearing it today. Yeah. So I do a little bit of everything, you know? So. That's what's up. That's what's up. So how'd you get into club promoting? <coughs> so club promoting, uh, when I was back home, I'm originally from Albania. So when I was back home, I was I started doing events with my teachers at, at the school because I was like a senator of my class. So I was doing events with, with my teachers at, at the school. And then uh, when I graduated, I started just selling tickets at different events, at like different clubs in, in, in my city. And then uh, I got the good news to come to the US uh, six years ago. And then I just wanted to still continue to do the same thing. But it was a little hard because I didn't have any connections here, but I just figured it out was pulling up to different events, different uh, networking events, just networking with different people. And uh, then I reached the point when I was like, I can start doing my own events. So that's fine. So like you said, you started off pretty earlier. How, how was that? Like being in the clubs at such a young age, did you have like, did you feel like you were that dude or what? Did you have a little chip on your shoulder? Like, oh, I'm trying to hurry up, grow up so I could, you know, do everything I want to. So when I was back home, I was like, I was obviously younger, I was 19. So, but the difference between here and there is that a lot of clubs back in Albania, they are, <clears throat> they're like all ages. So it's like, I didn't have to like show um, my ID or anything. And that's a difference here because when I got here, a lot of clubs are 21 plus and I was 19 at that time. So it was a little hard maneuvering in like different clubs and stuff. So I was just starting to pull up to different clubs that was <coughs> 18 plus or like, you know, uh, showcases and stuff. So, uh, but back there, like I said, like I was really young. So I was just, I was just happy to sell tickets for different clubs and just, you know, get paid a little bit, just mm -hmm. build my name more over there, you know, so. So what, what, um, what year did you come to the US? Uh, 2018. So you came in 2018 and- It wasn't even that long ago. Yeah, that's right there. Six years ago. Yeah. So what were some things you were doing to like build up the influence for yourself to get people in a club? Cause you've been, you were promoted of the year for like what three times, three three years in a row. Like, yeah. so like, how would you build that influence for yourself? Because twenty eighteen, that's like around the corner. Yeah. You know, to get people packed out in events, and you only came to US in twenty eighteen. That's a skill. So like, what were some of the things you felt like you was doing to to get people to show up to your events? So like the first the first year, I would say I was just pulling up, like I said, to different events, different promoters, just connecting with people. Sometimes I would just go and just. Uh, you know, just be there for the for the vibes. Like I wouldn't even mm -hmm. ask for anything because I was just trying to build myself up, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just selling tickets, selling VIPs. I would do some contests on my Instagram page just to to get more like local artists on my page because that's a really important part of the shows. And uh, like I did that for like a year. Then I started working for other promoters, just having them out, and then that would help me make my connections as well. And then I started doing my own events, like maybe 20, like 2020. Like I actually, like COVID really actually helped me because everything was shut down over here. But I started working in a club in New Hampshire mm -hmm. during that time because New Hampshire was open. So I was like one of the, like one of the few ones that was actually still doing events during COVID. So that really helped me because everybody was like still wanting to go out even though it was during COVID. But that would be like Jewel Nightclub was like the only spot opening. Manchester, New Hampshire. So, oh, another question: Was was there a culture shock when you came over here? Like, versus like music, the way people act, everything. Like, 
how's the music in Albania versus the music in America? Well, it, I mean, it was a lot of different things, like primarily my language as well, because mm -hmm. back nice. there, my, you know, like we speak Albanian. So I used to get some English classes back in high school because I know that one day I would come to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I just learned some English from high school. And then when I came here, you know, a lot of people don't understand me. So I'll just... Even the events, I was still using that just to talk to people, just to <laughs> learn more English as well. <laughs> and uh, then beside that, like the cult, I mean, the music definitely is different. Like over there is mostly Albanian music, EDM too. Yeah. But I'll say like even big artists are known back home. Like, you oh, know, like everybody knows like, you know, Drake or like, you know, Lil Wayne, like big yeah. artists like that. But I mean, even back home, like hip hop was like Albanian hip hop was like mostly, you know, popping. Yeah, so. I've always been in that field because I always liked like hip hop and like club music. Do you feel like when you got to the US, you continued to promote because that's what you, that's what you knew, that's what you did back home, or do you feel like you continued to do it because you saw the money was good within like the business itself? Like I, I like I always wanted to do like the club. Like I always liked the club. Like I liked the music. Like even when I was in high school back home, like I said, I was young, so I wasn't even thinking much about like money or anything like that because I was really young. So, but I like being in the club. I like listening to the music. Right. I liked, you know, connecting with people, yeah. the girls drinking too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I just, that when I came here, that's when I saw, that's when I saw mostly that, you know, like it's actually good money as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just gotta put the work. Yeah, that's how I am too, bro. I like to, I like to put myself in social environments. I like to go to networking events. Pretty I like sure. to talk to people. I like to be around like just, you know, people that just talking about their certain stuff. So I feel you on that, bro. Like yeah. So I like, out of <laughs> like all the things you just Not mentioned. even just females. Like in the beginning, <laughs> I remember. Like the female presence. Come on. In, the, in, the, in the beginning, like I remember. I mean, I still do. Like I was just DMing like so many people. Like just yeah. you, like everybody probably has a DM from me. Like back, you know, like in 2019, 2020. Like, That's what I was just being everybody DMs. No ego or nothing like that. Just That's good. Everywhere. That, that's the way you gotta. That's the way you grow though, cause like a lot of people, shit like that holds them back. Like I'm not gonna message this person cause I don't know them. Yeah. You feel me? I feel like the person that's just like, man, fuck it. If I gotta get people to this event, I gotta send messages out. I see you do that shit all the time too. Yeah, that's yeah. facts. And what I, what I would do also is like after I met somebody at the club, like I'll just make sure I tap in with them the next day and be like, yo, I saw at this event, send me your music, and then I'll just you know share it if I really liked it the next day. So just you know just to keep the connection going. Yeah. And it's not just like, oh, we just met and now we see each other like after three years, you know, just keep the conversation going. No, that's facts. So like out of everything that you do that that ties into club promoting, what do you what do you like the most? Like what's your favorite step or process when it comes to creating an event or bringing an artist out? Like what do you like the most? Do you like the networking? Do you like the females? Do you like like what do you like the best? I like booking artists that I actually listen to their music as well, you know, just having them come to my event and then, you know, meeting them in person yeah, and then, you know, connecting with them and then seeing how the crowd reacts, you know, singing their music and stuff. That's dope, that's dope. So how does, like, the profit work within the music business? Do you get paid before the event starts, Promoting after the it. event? How does it start? So when you book an artist, like, the first thing is, you know, I do everything in contracts. Like that's that's the fire, first step. You, you gotta do everything in contracts because these artists, you know, they just all about their money, and mm. that's like it's just a business, mm. you know. So you you know send out the contract. You book the venue. You book a venue. Uh, you book you know a specific date. You send it to the manager or the artist that you're dealing with through emails or you know via you know Instagram DMs and stuff. And then you lock in with half of the money up front, which is like half for the deposit, and then. After you pay half, then they give you the approval to make your to make the flyer for the event, and then after it's good, you just post the flyer, and then the other half you just give it to them when they come to the venue the day of. So All right. when they get to the club, they get the other half. And you mentioned like a lot of artists are just there like for a paycheck. You know, they're trying to get paid. Have you ever like I need the truth? You ever dealt with like an artist that they like they they you feel like they played you or finessed you in any type of way before, like some funny business? Like I like I wouldn't say funny business. It's just maybe like because sometimes we deal with their managers, and then the artists don't even know what you talk with the manager. Mm -hmm. It's like you know you might agree to the contract like of 
we're paying you this much, but you're gonna do two feed posts or like three Instagram stories, and they all they do is like post a day off, you know? And it's like, I can't really blame the artist because he don't even probably know all that stuff, but it's just, you know, you just gotta keep talking to the manager. Sometimes you feel like you are bothering them too much because they have a hundred things going on. But I wanna say like funding business, I, I haven't had like any like money situation like that. Like mm -hmm. I always try to be like, money is good, even though like some events are like really hard to make the money back. like. You, we still gotta make the artist paid because I still want the connection with him. I still want right. to bring him in the future because you know somebody is coming is upcoming right now, but tomorrow they might be like you know the biggest superstar, and you know you want that connection to, you know, keep going. Are there you said like there's sometimes artists that are coming up. Are there any artists that were like you had a chance to book them, and you did it, and then like three four months later they're they're blowing up and they're like just they're everywhere. Yeah, I've said this before. It was Ice Spice. Like oh, I had, I had, <laughs> I had the chance to book Ice Spice for like, like really a low amount. Like I don't want to say how much, but it was like really low. It was just <laughs> when uh, the song Munch came came out. Yeah. And uh, I was gonna book her, but then I was like, I don't, like because a lot of artists, like after the first hit, they like kind of like fall off, you know. So mm -hmm. in my opinion, that's what was gonna happen with her. Yeah. And she just. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, now she's not even doing club appearances, so that's yeah, the first yeah, thing. Yeah. But yeah, like, you know, after she just dropped, you know, mass songs, and you know, she just kept going she's up. Going crazy. But it has been with other artists too. But I try to book them like in the when they're like upcoming because they are cheaper. And then once they drop like a, a you know, like a big hit, then it's, the price goes from 5K or like 6 to 8, like 20K, mm -hmm. 25K. That's insane. And you still got, you built the relationship with them early though. So they remember like, yo, that's the person that booked me when I when I had nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's like instead of me charging him fifty thousand like I charge everybody else, I'll like, get a little, you know, a better price. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or they might give me the after party after the show instead of another promoter. So that's how it usually works. Who was the most expensive artist you had to book? Um, the the most expensive artist, I mean, me and my partner did Gucci Mane last year. It was, I'm not going to say how much, but it was six figures, Gucci Mane. Oh, yeah? <laughs> as Roadrunner in Boston. Did you, you, did you, did you make the profit back at least? Yeah. Oh, that's good. But I mean, like, you know, Gucci Mane is like a legend. So that was like, that was probably my biggest artist, I would say. Because in my eyes, he's like a legend, you know? Yeah. Even, oh, yeah. even though I've done like other like new generation artists that are like pretty big. But to me, like Gucci Mane is like Valid. a big deal. So like, um... What was your first, your, not your first, but your favorite artist to see live, like in person when you were there? Who, not like, who was the best performer out of all the artists that you've brought out? The best performer? A lot of them, huh? I don't want, yeah, I don't even want to say it. <laughs> I don't want to say a name, but it's been like some artists, like I really like with their energy, even if they're not like, the best performer because most of my events are at the club so it's like yeah. you know they're just they're having a good time yeah, true, true. drinking a little bit smoking some hookah and stuff so they're just not gonna go on for like one hour to perform it's not it's not a concert it's at the club you know yeah. so i'm not gonna say who's like the best performer because they only do like at the clubs it's like they do like you know five six songs and they're just there chilling for like 30 45 minutes yeah but right, so i like artists that have like good energy like you know they're just they're you know laughing with people and stuff, you know let me e reiterate that question then. Um, who was the most outgoing artist? Like, who's the one, the the one artist that socialized with the fans more, took the most pictures, and like, that just was a people person, I guess, around their fans. I would say because it was a recent one, like two weeks ago, we had OGZ and Three Time Baby. No. So they're like West Coast rappers. They got like a pretty you know big song right now. Uh, so that was like. They was like really chilling. We got them for an after party after mm -hmm. their concert. So they was just chilling like, they stayed for like a hour and something, like a hour and 30 minutes. They were just in the club, just having a good time, drinking, interacting with fans, taking pictures. Right, that's dope, that's dope. So that was really good energy. Tell me about like the biggest, best event you think you've had. Like packed out, vibes was going crazy. Inside the club, it was actually lit. People were spending money. Like, what's the best event you had and why? The best event, I would say it was, in my experience, it was Capella Gray uh, because mm. that was my birthday bash. And it was a Fed musical. 
uh, in Providence. So it was like packed out. It, it was my birthday as well, so I was actually performing too. So those were the best event, like great energy. You know, he like, because I got Capella Gray like right when that song, right when that like big song came out. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was like everybody was singing that song, like every every club was playing it. It was everywhere. The songs are here. And then I was <laughs> also performing. It was my birthday too, so I was that was definitely like my best. Right. Capella Gray. That's just a vibe. I'm that guy. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what what song did you perform? Uh, I performed like a couple of my songs, like mm -hmm. Big Lid, Goddamn, uh, the one with Wave. I like it, yeah. So when we talk about, obviously you're a promoter, but there's other things that you do on the side. You have your merch, you make music. What made you get into like the music? And like, is this something you're looking to take serious? Or are you just doing it to just like create like another stream of income for yourself? What made you want to get into like the music? So how I first start, started with music is I was always in, in a, a studio with like different local artists because I was working with them for the shows. They would, you know, tell me to pull up to different studio stations and stuff. And then I connected with my engineer at Black Box, and then I just started doing a song. Uh, my first song I did was with Ran Suno, oh, and uh, then I had another song with Jay Guapo. So I was like, I got like you know two you know pretty good songs, and you know Suno Ran Suno, but that's his. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's his like IG, but he still has like Ran Suno. He goes by Ran Suno. And for those songs. You got those artists on the songs because the relationships you already built with them when you booked them and stuff like that, like beforehand? Or did you just have to like reach out to them to, to book like a regular feature? Yeah, with Ran Suno, I did a deal for like a, a, a show and a feature. Oh, so. So I got a, like a better deal. But right now, like I've booked Ran Suno since then, like four other times. So like he's, you know, we really have a great relationship. Dope. And then Jay Guapa was my first time working with him. I got the same thing, a show and a feature for a, for a better deal. And then, yeah, I was just like, I just, I dropped the first song with Ran Suno. He was promoting it. I was promoting it. It is really good. And then I dropped the second song, the same thing, because, you know, it definitely had an impact because it was with two, like, you know, artists that have already a buzz. And then I just kept doing with my songs, my, you know, solo songs. So, like, I had other features with artists from the city. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to keep doing music just to build my name. You know, you never know what, what might come in the future, but... Yeah. My main thing is like doing events and just using the the music to build my name more. Mm -hmm. Um, with Ron Suno, how did like the fans react to like that song? Did you get like a, a lot of positive feedback? Like, how were people like fucking with the song? Uh, with Ron Suno, I mean, the first time we ever performed the song was at the club because we actually shot the music video there. Oh, that's tough. So it was like so my hard. first performance, like you know, my first time ever doing music and stuff, coming out on on stage and stuff. But then when we dropped it, you know, some people know, you know, some people have seen it from, you know, my clips and stuff. So they they kind of know that it was coming. <coughs> but it was it was a pretty good reaction. You know, some people was feeling away. Some people was like, oh, I don't know if you're going to be a promoter now or you're doing music. There is a hundred other local artists that are, are like more talented. And, not, that, you know, some people feel like, you know, I'm taking somebody else's place. Or, you yeah. Know. But I'm just I'm just still doing doing it for me first, and then whoever supports me, then I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, of course. I feel like there's never really taken somebody else's place. There's a lot of places to be at. Yeah, for sure. me. So, like, for people to say that is just, it's just, hey, you already, it's, it's smart. I mean, in this industry, is, sometimes it's like luck, or sometimes it's like, you know, who has like a budget, you know, be, you know be, behind the song or behind an album. And it's like, you know, sometimes people don't have that, and they feel like, oh, now, you know, this guy is taking our spot, or this guy is not even... As talented as me, but you know he getting it's different placements that. and different you know places that I cannot get. You know, mm -hmm. just do better, man. <laughs> and how do you deal with people that maybe don't support your music? Like, do you feel like you let you let shit like that get to you, or you just like? I just don't deal with it anymore. Good. Like, <laughs> like the first maybe like three four months, then I'm you know I'm I was maybe feeling a double way when I was like reading a comment or something. Yeah. But right now I don't like I don't really respond or I don't really. You Probably know. don't even read the comments no more. Like. I mean, I read it if, if it's under my post and it's like, you're under my page trying to be funny. Yeah, so yeah, 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 I'll read yeah, it. But yeah, if it's yeah. like a blog or something, I, like I don't even bother with the negative comments. You yeah. know? What artists do you feel like, because obviously, like you said, you're networking when you're booking these artists, they're coming to your events. 
they're, they're performing, you're building with them. You build that relationship. You want them to come back in the future. You always want to make sure you leave a good impact on everybody you bring out. It, what artists do you feel like you have the most genuine like relationship with? Out of everybody that you've like booked or worked with, like is there anybody that you like you have like that you built that good relationship with over time? Um, probably Dusty Locaine. That's like because I've I've booked him like a lot of times. I've booked him like six, seven times. So it's just you know, it's business as well, but it's like, you know, we also like like he'll like whenever I'll drop a song, like he'll you know share it as well, like on his story without me even telling him. Or like Tutu G's right, as well, he'll do the same thing. Fire. And like like I said, Ran Suno is a really good one too. And then I work with other people that you know I still you know got their phone number or like we still follow each other on Instagram. You know, like Ruby Rose or like T Grizzly and stuff. I love so. Ruby Rose. Bro. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was a great show. Shout out Ruby Bad Rose. Yeah. Yo, she 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 was expensive, right? Yeah, she was. I booked in a, her in, in it was 2021. Was it, it was just a club appearance or like did she perform the, the couple songs she has? I know she has like a couple songs. It was, uh, I mean, it was a club appearance, but I mean, she performed though. Like she had music when I, when I, when, when I booked her because right. she was on tour too. Mm. So I booked her in Lowell, actually, it's, it's Smokehouse. Tough. Damn, Smokehouse? Yeah. That's insane. I've been there a few times. Now with business, you can't always profit. Sometimes you take L's. A lot of the times you, you take W's. Have you ever booked anybody where like you took like a, a good L? Like you paid like a, a, a certain fee and let's say that it was a slow night or you did it, it just didn't sell? Uh, I mean, yeah, like I've had like slow nights. I wouldn't say like a big, big loss. That's good. But I've had like slow nights that is like you break even and now you just got to pay like the DJs or, you know pay like security and stuff. So you might, you know, be down like 1,000 or so. But it's usually like, usually pretty good. Because like I said, like in the beginning, I wasn't I wasn't really rushing the process. I was just making sure before I even started doing like my own events, I was making sure that I, I was like, do I have enough connections to like actually do my own event? Because mm. I was working with different promoters and stuff and I was seeing like, there's like a lot of money that goes towards the show and it's like, I could. I just came to the U.S. I could not like if my first show would have been bad. Then it's like, oh, now I gotta <laughs> maybe find find the funds somewhere. I had yeah. an accountant internship, so I was like using my money from that <laughs> towards my my events. So, so you went to school. You went to school out here too. Yeah, I graduated from uh, Bentley. I got my finance yeah. degree. Oh shit, that's, that's fine. So yeah, that's hard. So I was doing an accountant internship during that time, and I was using the money from there. For, from, for the events. That's he, tough. He came out here in 2018, That's a got a degree, and is the number one promoter in Massachusetts in six years. And you're using some of the funds from your internship to make your, your dreams come true, bro. Mm -hmm. That's like some, some real... I actually did uh, my first two years. Like I started school as soon as I got here, like yeah. mm, the same year. Mm -hmm. Like I did two years at the Northern Essex Community College, a community college. Michael. And then I transferred to Bentley. <laughs> I finished I finished there, I graduated there. And then during that time, I had an internship at uh, a biotech company. And then I was I was there for like six months, but that money I was, I was using it for my events. So you majored in accounting? Yeah, uh, finance, I majored finance. in finance. Yeah, that's lit. So I gotta, I gotta ask, how was the Grammys? I know you you went to the Grammys, and I'm I'm pretty sure you could only get invited to the Grammys. Not something you could just buy a ticket for. It. How how was that? How did it feel getting invited? So I've been there uh, twice. Last year I was uh, invited by uh, one of my engineers okay. that is in LA right now, and uh, now this year I became a member because oh, the way it is is like you can become a member if you have like two <laughs> strong recommendations, either from big media companies or from people that are actually like inside the Grammy committee. And uh, I got two references from my engineer and from uh, another manager. And uh, I was I was there. I brought my boy with me too this year. That's so tough. it was it was it was pretty it was pretty dope. Just you know being being around different, you know, celebrities, just watching them, you know, go by, performing. How is it with them? Years. Are they like just Cause a lot of people don't know celebrities. Are they like just regular people? Do they act a little funny? Are they stuck up? Like, 
I mean, I didn't, I didn't like I didn't have like the chance to like have a conversation with any mm. of them. Like yeah, I had, yeah. I was meeting like producers and engineers where, where? and stuff. But I was, cause you never want to be like too like oh like yeah, you know fame yeah, down. Like run up to them, people are gonna look at you crazy. Oh shit, Beyonce. So you know you just need to. I was just keeping it cool, but I mean, they, yeah, they're like, you know, they have they had the seat just like everybody else. Yeah. When it was their time to perform, they would go backstage and perform. What was the itinerary like? Like how like how many days were you out there? What were you doing like every single day? Because I know the, the the event is just like for what? It's for one day. Yeah, it's yeah. one day. Yeah. So I went there like like a weekend, uh, because so like it's always like the weekend of the Grammys is like always mad events going on. Like all the celebrities are there for like the whole week. Yeah. Uh, and it's like you want to go to like different like because for me the Grammys is like really dope but for me it's like if I want to use that opportunity I gotta go to like all these you know red carpet events like before the Grammys because that's where like all the people that works with these celebrities are gonna be at you know mm -hmm. so like I went to like maybe like three or four uh, events like it was like Friday because the Grammys are usually on a Sunday so like Friday and Saturday I would just go to like different events and like a lot of them actually are like uh, RSVP and it's like not that hard to get you know to to get to them so I was you know I was there for like a weekend and then going to events Friday Saturday That's connecting so with people out of all the events that you've gone to do you feel like there's somebody that you build a connection with that's been able to just give you advice or help you with your business to like just take it from like the ground up like is anybody you just came in contact with they gave you some type of advice or you build some type of connection with them that's been able to just help you throughout the years? Uh, I would say in my, I mean, in my field or like in, in general? In general. Mm. Like I know sometimes I go to events and there's someone that just tells me like something or I have some type of conversation with some person or I'll build a connection with this person and like I'll use that information to just like go like from A to Z. Like I'll just turn it up a notch with the things that they told me, the things that I learned. I mean, I've made like, I will say I've, I've made like big like club promoters that uh, they do their events like in North Carolina. In North Carolina, I met Tim Boss. Like he's like mm -hmm. one of the big deal in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and like he do like like a lot of big artists. So I I just got some advice from him, just how to deal with like the the events and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I've met like other, I met like other like engineers or, like musicians and stuff. But I don't I, I don't really remember like any like crazy like advice that I've gotten. It's just usually like you know. It's like a quick talk, especially yeah. when it's like busy events. Like, mm -hmm. as a promoter, is is it stressful, or is it like you you deal with it, or is it something that's like, kind of gives you anxiety, going going like going through your events. Um, I know you like book openers and stuff like that. So like, how how's that? Is that stressful, or is does it go smoothly? Yeah, that's that's stressful sometimes with the openers, but mostly it's like. Sometimes people just think it's easier than what it actually is. Yeah. And it's like when you book an artist, especially like upcoming artists, like people know their name, but they wouldn't pay like $50 to go see them. So it's like really, like you really got to put it on, like, on everybody's like face, send the flyer everywhere, like, you know. So that that part is, you know, just bringing the people in the club is, is, is hard sometimes. Yeah, so like the marketing and that's probably the more stressful yeah, part. Yeah, marketing of the job. is the most stressful. And then sometimes when it's like last minute things, like something goes on with the city, then I have to like move the event to a different venue, which has happened like twice or three times. And, uh, you know, the last minute thing is like you gotta find a new venue now. Like you gotta let everybody know to, it's new location, it might be a different city. Now it's like a whole thing. Or like, uh, depends how you're doing on the contract with the artist. Sometimes you gotta book the transportation. You know, now you gotta coordinate with the manager, like time and stuff. So, yeah, it's just hard. I mean, so that's probably like the worst case scenario, having to switch locations. Yeah, when that happens, that's yeah, that's probably the like something you definitely don't want. Like that's like yeah. the hardest part. If if that happens, it's like changing locations and telling people where it is. What what goes into the budget? Cause I know it's more than just booking and paying for like for the artists. I know you mentioned like security, DJs, what else is included like in your budget? Like let's say you're looking to book an artist and you're putting together like a, a certain amount that you have to, to pay for like, to cover the entire night. What else goes in, into it besides just paying the artist? So when it comes to, in, to an event, like depending on the relationship you have with a club owner, 
-hmm. if you work with them before, then you know they'll be more lenient and like some things they'll cover for you, like the security. Fire. They'll they'll do it for you. But if it's like your first event, then you gotta spend money for the artists. You gotta spend money for the flyers. If you wanna make like physical flyers, mm. which it helps with the tickets. Yeah. You gotta spend money on advertising, like boosting the event on Instagram, Facebook, like Evan Bright. If it's on Evan Bright, Evan Bright ads. Mm. Uh, like I said, you know the DJs. You gotta pay them at the end of the night. Um, then if it's your first event, you probably have to pay the security of the club too, cause because the owner doesn't know you. He doesn't know how many people you're gonna bring. He doesn't know if he gonna make money from your event. You know. Mm. So yeah, this is these are pretty much what you gotta pay, and then you know the bar goes. If it's the club, then you know they get paid from the tips from the tables and stuff. Also like. The bottle girls they take from the profit a little bit. No, the bottle girls like if they are the bottle girls from the club, they just get the tips from the from their tables, mm -hmm. you know, from the tables that we have. So. I have a question based on that. I feel like you know, Nick, and I'm like family too. Mm -hmm. Is it true that bottle girls get paid besides tips? They get paid. They get like a certain percentage. From from the event, from the door and stuff, from like the. Whenever the, whenever the work, like whenever the no, not not tips, not at my tips. events, no. Okay, so they only get the, um, tips as well. Yeah, tips but or or depends because you know like so some promoters, have, some promoters if they have like if it's mm -hmm. a bar girl that has like a really big following, and then they she, them, yeah, if they have like a night with them, then it's like they pay her like because I've seen like they pay certain girls like <laughs> let's say five hundred dollars. Plus, they get the tips from their mm. table, plus the ones being thrown. So it's like the pains on the girl that is, is working the night. So. Have you ever booked bottle girls yourself? Like, you know, like, I, that bottle girl has influence. If I bring her in and her team in, like, we're going to sell a lot faster. No disrespect to any bottle girl. I've, I've, done like two, <laughs> I've done like two events, which I booked like, it wasn't necessarily like a bottle girl. It was like most like a host, like a host. Okay. Uh, so I paid them like three hundred, four hundred dollars to come host, and it's like they posted the event like twice, and it's like they didn't sell no tables, they didn't bring no people, and then they just they just got paid for nothing. So I'm like, okay, I did it one time, I got a couple of followers, I guess you know, but they didn't bring me no money, like yeah. they didn't book no yeah. tables, they didn't sell no tickets because if I'm paying you, I'm sending you a ticket link so I can see how many tickets you're selling, mm. yeah. and it's like you have you have. 50 views on the link, but it's like zero sales, you know? Yeah, that's crazy. And then, you know, sometimes they might be like, oh, I have people at the door, but it's like, I cannot really count that, you know? And I did that for like two events, and I was like, I'm, I'm good on that. I just, if you're a bar girl, you just get the tips from the tables. And a lot of bar girls, they don't even sell tables, so they just get the tips from the tables we sell. Yeah, so it's like they, they just... Going to collect the check. Yeah, like yeah, I said, if you are yeah. a good bar girl, if you sell tables, that's that's cool. But Yo, most you, most of them they don't sell tables. Yo, if you if you a bar girl, you watching this man, and you sell tables, hit up ours. Get your marketing up. And it's hard. <laughs> and it's like my events. I actually have like artists coming up, like artists that you know people listen to, and yeah. they still cannot sell tables. And yeah, it's like yeah, if it's like nah. a party, it's like I don't know, it's different. But some girls might sell tables, but in, from my experience, from this, you know. Three, four years, I'll be doing this constantly. It's like you probably a lot of bottle girls cannot sell, not even a table. Is there a certain percentage of bottle girls that, that do good, that just make it a, a big night? Like, is there bottle girls you like specifically when, like, you've also you, you hosted a lot of events. Is there bottle girls you know, like, when they're there, it's like, I bet, like, I like the, like the people that are working tonight. No, yeah, for me at this point, it's like, I'm not booking this bottle girl because... I know she can book tables because, like I say, like most of the times I know they're not gonna book tables. But yeah. I like their service. I like like if I'm asking you for my, let's say my bars right now, I I need them right now. So you know, like they make sure I'm good, and then I make sure you know they go with the tips and stuff. But I don't anymore book them because they're gonna bring tables. If they do, that's that's great. But I don't even think about it because I know how it is. Mostly they're not gonna sell tables. How'd you go about building your following on Instagram? Because a lot of the times you're promoting on social media and that's how you're getting people to the club. How'd you build that audience? So some, uh, like in the beginning, I mean, I had like a lot of followers from back home. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, 
Uh, and then when I came here, like doing my events, like networking with different, you know, people and stuff, artists. I have a lot of local artists on my page, just looking for shows or like you know different stuff. And then uh, whenever I do the events, like the the celebrity posts the event, and I, 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 like I always make sure I do a collab post with them, which you know brings a lot of followers or they have me in their description. Mm. And then I try to keep that following because with the next events, because I don't want them to see like, oh, this guy has this artist today and then doesn't have an event for like another month or two because they're mm -hmm. going to unfollow if, you know, you're not consistent with that because they want to come to different events and stuff. So yeah, I just try to be consistent. I imagine you got to interact with so many people. How do you keep that like, I don't know, do you have like a... a a buck? Do you have like how do you how do you keep everybody like in order? Like these are artists, these are producers, these are engineers, these are DJs. Like how do you keep that all maintained? Because it's like what I usually, it's a lot of people. Yeah, what I usually do is like the feature on Instagram. There is like uh, the primary DMs and general DMs. Mm, I do the same. Thing. I just put the primary like you know whoever just have like general questions, and then on general I put like local artists, I put people I work with. So it's like easier to like whenever I have a show. Like on my general, I like all local artists that I can hit up to see if they're interested in the show or like people that want to host the event. So that's that's how I do mm -hmm. it. Yo, you ever had so. shorties try to get at you because the people you work with? <laughs> <laughs> like get at me like like try to fuck with you like yo that nigga be around mad artist let me try to fuck with this nigga like oh yeah they be like you know he's a like he's a lead promoter like they just want to be in the section you know they want to do stuff <laughs> after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like That's most of the times I just I just know how it be like I just be, because I, like I'm in the club like almost like every week so I just I just know how it be. Yeah, yeah, no, got to, got to, keep a gangster. Now, nah, but um, I'll ask you one last question. So you do music, you're promoting, and obviously you mentioned your merch. You're wearing your merch right now. Do you have a Badly B collection? Go check it out. We yes, got sir. sweatpants, yeah. t-shirts, hats, everything. Yeah. Yes, do you sir. have someone that's helping you with the designs? You create everything yourself. How do you do it? How do you go about your merch? So shout out Hybrid Collections. That's how we started the event. I mean the the brand. He's uh he's from Ulster. Uh, how I started is he 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 he's also he is also an artist. Mm -hmm. So he before he used to pull up to my events as just a musician. And then he had the idea that he was like, yo, why don't you do your own merch and, you know, sell it at the shows? Because people come for the artists, but they come for you as well. Facts. And then we tried that. The first collection did really good. And then we just kept going. So it's like we've been doing the brand for like a year and a year and a half. So this is our like seventh drop or so. Fire. So make sure you tap in with Hybrid Collection and Bass Baby Collection. Facts. Shout out Hybrid sure. Collections. Um, we appreciate you for coming out here today, bro. Obviously, we got you out here because you're a hustler. You fit, like, the theme of the podcast. This podcast isn't just for, like, regular people. It's for people that are hustling, making a way for themselves. They're grinding. They have a, a dream. They're making it happen, bro. So we wanted to bring you out here because you have been one of the greatest promoters in the area for years. Obviously, that's not luck. That's a skill that you have, bro. Um, so we want to commend you. Keep doing what you do. And we appreciate you having you. Coming Appreciate y'all having me. Appreciate Good luck with the brother. podcast. You know, much success. Six years. Yeah. We're not here six years. But yeah, man, we out of here. Get busy, pod. We out.